No most favorites. Welcome. Okay. Welcome to the show. This time around, everyone can hear you as well as me. So, are we going Very to start good. with your games? You're allowed to speak. Oh, yes, yes, okay. that'd be great. Okay, cool, cool. Um, we are going to go chronological order, so I will get to the 4040s a little bit further down the track, but I think it's a good policy to quickly revamp these two. Now, remember how you told me that you played a good and a bad game? Uh, yes. And uh, this was labeled as the good one. And remember how I got back to you saying that very often the result of a game completely changes the realistic evaluation of the value of the game itself. Because in my opinion, this game that you did win, for the record, was pretty bad compared to the one that we are about to look next, which was rather mm -hmm. awesome, save for the last move blunder. Yeah. Okay, so queen d4 is unspeakable. Uh, then they went back to d3 now. See, this is killing me. Because I don't get why this is becoming a candidate move here. So you have got a chess coach, or so he claims to be, who may have released the course on a certain part of the chessboard, right? Yeah. What would that be? The center. Yeah, and what would that be in terms of the relevant move here? Um, like bishop what, c5? No. Definite no. Ah, oh, d5. Okay, so how is this not a total no-brainer? Like, this is your instinct move. This is what you want to do here. Unless, A, it loses, or B, you have got a move that wins on the spot. Neither is the case. You definitely don't have a win, and it definitely doesn't lose. So you need to go to the center. And it's important that you do this now, because if, for example, you play the move bishop c5, you said, which by no means is obvious that this is the best square for the bishop, they may play c4, because now they are fighting for the center, and your d5 might become far less effective. So mm. first you chuck your stuff in the center, and then you still develop your pieces, which, funnily enough, your beloved coach is second course in the making. This is none of the above, man. This is, well, it's not really center, it's not developing, it's moving the same piece, and even its objective is really obscure. So what you are telling me is that you want to trade of these knights, and it's so important to you that you are going to spend the next three moves on it. What? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. how? Like, that you was... have got everybody <laughs> at home, we went 95, take, take, he, here. And after bishop f4, contrary to how it started, we are 5 million kilometers behind in development. And yeah. against some queen moves, we are instantly losing, or very close to that. I mean, you do have knight d5, maybe. But boy, this is just a tragedy. Like, these dudes are sitting at home and thinking, our boss is not doing well today. <laughs> it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it, and yeah, like... This is a typical case, and it won't even cost us two minutes. Really, a position where it's a 10 second move. Okay, back to reality. Now we have got a very interesting position. Um, was it possible to play in the center? Well. Because I would like to hit the iron while it's hot. Meaning, this is still pinned. Did we look at this? Yeah, I mean, it's, it is possible. Well, my problem with this, Lucas, is that not is it possible, but it's super extremely logical, isn't it? I mean, you also have knight takes e4 if we are tactically inclined. Yeah. But there there is a tremendous amount of pressure here, 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 here. So you can't help but notice that, oi, Stuff is going on. I need to calculate. And I think 94 is legit. Yeah. I don't even realize it. But either or, like th this is actually something that has come up a lot in my recent lessons where I reprimand my students for castling and they are like, what? Like castling well, is, is a typically a move in your list of developing moves that you leave last 
unless there, there is a realistic danger lurking around your king. Mm. And there isn't one. Yeah, yeah. So, and you have got a winning tactic. Yeah, I, I, I didn't see 94 at the time. Which is yeah. quite tragic, really, because having played Bishop B4, you basically are announcing to the world that you are trying to crack your opponent on this diagonal, on the pin, and obviously everything that the knight defends. So it's very counterintuitive to not to look now, given that you have built up as much on this pin as you possibly could muster. So if you now castle, it's almost like saying, well, this was for nothing, right? Mm. So you almost feel disappointed about yourself because you put so much effort into trying to make something happen and then you go like, yeah, nah, she'll be fine. That is a humongously wasted opportunity and again, look at your time consumption. Now when we needed to think, we didn't. When you played 95, that cost us two minutes. Yeah. The mismanagement of time is still omnipresent um this is fine i'm thinking that maybe takes first would have been just a micron more accurate because it actually would have avoided this response now and since we have done substantial damage in the pawn structure i mean not only are they doubled but isolated too giving up the bishop is fully justified All right Okay, <coughs> there, 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 and no comment. And I think you convert. Oh, okay, there's something very important that uh, really bugged me, and it might look stupid to discuss this because you're a piece up. So, can you please talk me through here about your train of thoughts when this move comes on the board? Your opponent here has played a4, right? So mm. after b6, a5 came to you hardly as a surprise. So what is Lucas thinking? Apart from why is my opponent not designing yet? Well, but he wants to take the b pawn. With the intention of? Um, taking on a7 with a rook. Well, I'm guessing that when they take on b6, you will take back with a pawn. Yeah, and then you'll go rook a7. Right. Okay, that's their intention. Now, since we are a piece up, it shouldn't matter. But since I also quite like to play in a spirit of, let's have a look at what the opponent wants. Does it make sense? Because you will find it more often than not. No offense, but on 1600 level, you will find yeah. that very it often was. you go like, yeah, more than happy to let that happen. But in this case, it does make a lot of sense. Why would you allow it? Do you have a move to prevent it? Sure, b5. Okay, what is the benefit of playing b5? Um, Apart well, from the obvious of denying the plan. Yeah, I mean, it fixes the pawns um, on... Uh, well, it fixes the b-pawn on black. Yep. It stops the pawns from advancing. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I mean, it means his rook can't <laughs> come to a7, yeah. All right, so you have listed here a lot of positives. You didn't say the one that I was hoping to hear the most, and that is that it makes this one a backward pawn on a black square. Yeah. This doesn't so much stop b4, because b4 didn't want to go anywhere. It stops c3. Mm. That's a backward pawn. If the, you weren't a piece up here, oh, just let me play on them one so I can remove this piece, it would be a humongous asset. In fact, the greatest on the board. The only reason why black better is better now is because c3 backward pawn. Mm. That's it. And you, do you remember what you played here as black? Here? Yeah, I took. I'm pretty sure I took. You yeah. did? Yeah. And all I have is silence. Like, that's virtually the most counterintuitive move you could think of. You just told me he wanted to open the A file. And now you go like, no, nah, no, nah, let me do that for you. What? Yeah, I suppose at the time I didn't think it was such a big deal given I was up a bishop. But then, you, you could be right, but even then, why are you engaging with this? Why don't you carry on with your own plan? 
Well, because then he takes me. And? I take him and he puts his rook on a, a seven. And? Like, what's this rook to you? Like, I don't understand the problem. Like, even if you were not a piece up, this is not a problem at the moment. It could be, especially if there was a second body coming down, but it's, it ain't yeah. happening. Like this, you extremely overestimated the power of that. And in fact, taking and then allowing this rook to constantly attack this is way more annoying. And now you had to create a weakness. Now the bishop is struggling and he has a target. So again, if you imagine I remove this one of the bishops, in contrast to what I showed you with b5, you're not even better here. Now, all yeah. this is theoretical because you're a piece up. So essentially, it doesn't matter what you do. But the train of thoughts... And yeah. the logic behind what's going on is just not there at all. And the rest was quite neat. Now, here, although there is nothing wrong with this, I would have played this. Mm, Without okay. any hesitation whatsoever for two reasons. One, because B4 is doomed. No matter what they do, I'm taking it next. Two, fixes the pawn. Three, no more back rank dramas. Yeah. It's just more practical. Because this is typically a scenario where now your opponent hopes. They won't resign now. Right, right. Because they see that there is a, a bit of a story going on in the back rank. Remember that our motto is that when winning, we try to play moves that are the most likely to shatter hopes and trigger resignation. This doesn't. Mm. Because even though there is no back rank issues, it, um, like there is a sense of... I might stir the pot there a bit. If you play this, that sends a very strong message of nobody, forget about back rank. Good luck defending B4 instead. Yeah. All right? Uh, very nice. Oh! And I was about to say, and then you nicely converted, except did you realize that you actually forced your opponent into a stalemate net? Uh, yes, I did. I did, and I wasn't going to take his rook. If he went rook f5 in the end, I was going to go king h6. But, yeah. Yeah, this was a little bit unfortunate. Like, this he, check he wouldn't. Here, I don't think he would have actually been able to stalemate. Like, it would there, only be a stalemate. There wasn't any Lucas, but rook. it's impractical because you do see, yeah. again, that we are giving hopes. And your <laughs> yeah. job is to shatter hopes and dreams. Pull this back. No more checks. Go, 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 go. Yeah. In these types of positions, checks are almost always a total waste of space. Because your way of winning it is to get a queen. Is this mm. move getting you closer to a queen? No. I mean, if there was a mate, all good. Yeah. But there is this stalemate net here that made me really worried. Luckily for you, after rook f5 here, rook takes, this actually removes the stalemate threat. So now after coming back, he's dead. Yeah. But yeah. he lost two pawns. <laughs> Yeah, And there is not even mate here, not forced one anyway. So yeah. it was a little bit impractical in my book. But other than that, the conversion was pretty neat. Okay, moving on to next, which I labeled as a much better game compared to the previous one. Perfect opening play by you. I really liked the quirkiness of queen takes, but objectively bishop takes is better because better. your goal is to have a bishop on the long diagonal. Right, right. And I know that you took back with queen so that you could do this. Yeah. But given that knight c3 is their move anyway, although according to the engine it's inaccurate, and a4 was to be preferred, which for the life of me I don't understand. Not to stop b5? Yeah, but then you play b6, bishop b7 anyway. Mm. Okay, so, yeah. This was all fine and dandy. He, you could have grabbed a few tempos on this and only then here. Yeah. And this is actually very important because now you have a chance to completely shut the bishop out with c4 and equally importantly open up the d file. Yeah. Same here instead of rook d8. Yeah, a6, b5. Yeah. a3. Oh my word. And although the engine does like this a lot. I am not so sold on that. I would have preferred this again. Okay. Yeah. That is just so thematic, so easy. 
again, it's the typical move that really rains on their party. Because now the bishop is shut in. It's complete la la land that they will ever get anything here. And they are already knocking on the door. And extended the bishop's diagonal too. Mm. So that would have been a very fluid, natural progression on the queen's side. Yeah, this is so pathetic. I mean, that's just tragic. Okay. Um, just for the record, I would like to mention to you that I think you have this move available here. And the queen, that's nothing. Oh, wait a second. Not here. Wait. No, sorry. I stand corrected. Not here. Here. Here you had knight h5. And the queen can't take. It can, but then comes Lucas with the famous tacticos. Whoa, hang on. This is hanging a little bit, isn't it? Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, so you're just eliminating the pinning piece. Yeah. Wow, that's nice. That's, yeah. That is very nice. That's uh, very nice, gee. Stuff. <laughs> and yep. um, A, there is a rock solid chance that they would have fallen for it, but more importantly, it's a strong move. Because what it does is that it prepares for knight f4 next. And very soon, they mm. dreams of being the attacker on the king's side will turn into actually we are defending on the king's side against the fury of the two bishops. Yeah. So that would have been a very neat addition to this whole shebang. And look, oh. this is tragic, but stuff like this happens. I'm not really upset yeah. about this because it just... You know, sometimes these things do happen that you just overlook the fact that the bishop is looking at it. But this game gave me a far stronger sense and feeling of you knowing what was going which way, where to put the pieces, how to control the middle, and so on. Like, look at it. You have got such a healthy piece layout. Against, yeah. Against this so, uh... total garbage. Like, there is so no coordination whatsoever among the white pieces. If you had just taken it back... Like, what did they play for here? Like, yeah, just I was absolutely uh, disappointed because I thought I had a really good position. You did. <laughs> you did. You totally outclassed them. But you can't label an entire game, which is hard effort of 20 really good moves, a complete garbage because of the 21st was a blunder. Yeah. It sucks. And it's not pleasant. But you can't just brush it off with, okay, this game was horrible. No, it wasn't. It was awesome. Yeah. Until here. Unlike the previous one, which you did win, which was actually pretty sketchy at best. Yeah, yeah. I'd much rather you play like this <laughs> than that one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you may have forgotten... I did, yeah. ...that this is our Alakine line. Yeah, I think... That I'm I... not very fond of. Well, it was it was to it was to pr um, delay his castling by another move because well, a, a five would trap the knight. Yeah, but they are playing going to play a five, right? That you took it granted that that's coming. Yeah. So my question to you is: Is at the addition of a four a five better for you or for them? Because it's not an argument that you are delaying their casting because this move also delays your development. So the only question the, uh, that needs to be asked, and that will decide the meta, is this position better for white as is, or with the addition of these? You tell me. Because either way, you are going to play bishop d3 next. So do you prefer bishop d3 here, or after a4, a5? You tell me. Well, it seems to make very little difference. Yeah, that's more or less correct. I would definitely prefer to omit it because a4, a5 means that now we have got a ginormous hole here and that is still not a weak square. Yeah. So I don't see any benefits. You can easily claim that it doesn't do enough harm to call it, you know, like a mistake, but... I wouldn't have wasted any moves on that. I would have developed. Yeah. 
Actually, I would have contemplated very seriously here developing Fianchetto, by the way, as well. Mm, okay. But um, more on that <coughs> later. Bishop d3. I do like a lot the bishop on d3. The only thing that you need to be very aware of, and in that regard, a4, a5 might help you, actually. So, could be a valid point. Is that black is aiming to play for c5. At which point, if you choose to take knight takes, that's a humongous tempo on this bishop. But it's not imminent yet. And actually, knight f6 just removed the knight from that. Yeah. I don't mind this move, actually. The computer likes the developing bishop f4. Yeah. And a big part of me would want to put the queen on e2 rather than c2. Partly because I would like to, if I were ever to attack this, I okay, want them the other way around. So my next yeah. mu mu few moves would be queen e2, bishop g5, rook d1, drop the bishop back and take it from there. Mm. Because that's yeah. a complete development. Okay, g6, lord, give me strength. Okay, I have no idea what this is, Lucas. Uh, stop 9g4. But why do we want to stop 9g4? Because it'll come with a tempo on the bishop, and then I have to move the bishop back. So? So, for an argument's sake, rook d1, knight g4, I come back. Whose position got better as a result of this sequence? Oh, mine. So, what's the story? I mean, again, it's not a mistake. By no means. Yeah. But again, we are spending moves on preventing things that are not threatening. Right, I'm just, you're not done with development. You have no reason not to. I, as a matter of fact, you could even come all the way back. But <laughs> bishop f4 is so good because now it's working that way. Knight b5 is on the cards as well. This knight is totally wayward. Like it's floating in air. It's really mm. bad. So it will have to go back. So contrary to what you think, they will lose the tempo, not you. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. So. Yeah. But, okay, that's fine. Knight d7, rook e1, fine. Bishop f8. Okay, I don't mind this. Computer somehow doesn't like it. And wants it to drop back to g5, but I don't mind it. It's fine. Now I don't understand what's going on. Why are you pulling it back? I mean, the pin is great. Don't get me wrong. It's fabulous. So, probably it's totally fine, but... Two moves that come to my mind very strongly here are rook d1. Because I like yeah. a perfect positions and this yeah. requires no thinking. And number two, knight e5. Because my coach tells me to put my stuff in the center. Now I don't need any explanation whatsoever. So it's more of a matter of taste. Even this is okay. I don't mind it, but it wouldn't have been my initial go-to for sure. Okay, mm. c6. 94, that's hanging, so I'm not doing that. Right? So, here the way you think, and oh my word, the way you think, Lucas, is that you have got a tremendous space advantage. Thank the Lord, all four pieces are on the board. As a result of that, it's a cluster disaster. Mm. No way on earth are you going to trade. Unless it's a forced win for you, or at least tremendous advantage. For example, why don't we play in 95? Once again, the same old, same old story. Put your stuff well, in the center. They can't take it because that wins a piece. And you are threatening to win the game in two more moves. Queen f4, take 94, and you just over attack the pin piece. But I have got a far larger proposition here, Lucas, and that is going to hurt you a lot. <laughs> this was 15-10. How on earth have you got here 50 seconds left, man? Like, this, Look at the position you have created. Look at it. There was not a single move to get here that required you to calculate. You put your pieces on best squares and all of them make no mistake were essentially no-brainers 
let's have a look. Night out, no brainer. Okay, fine, you played that, whatever. Mind you, why it's... What? Okay, that for a minute and a half is way too much. It's a brilliant move, but in the sense that you want to keep the pieces on the board. But, like, what were your alternatives here? Um, Knight C3, I suppose. How is that an alternative, man? Like, that this is not an alternative, and you know it as well as I do. You literally are forced to either take or retreat. There are no betweens. And you don't want to take, so we go back. Bang. This, for three minutes, was like, what? How? You have got a 10 second move available. Then you figure out that this could cause more trouble. Now you have got a half a minute decision at best to figure out whether you like bishop d3 now after or after the obligatory a5 as a response against a4. Mate, if this costs you three minutes, stuff it. It's not worth it. Yeah. Because you have got super easy moves on the ready. Bishop d3, bishop e3, queen e2, castle, get your stuff out. Like we can't lose time here. Especially, like, look at that. You play that move virtually in one second. And whilst I'm very strongly against rush decisions, that's the time it deserves. It's a no-brainer. Yeah, you know it, I know it, everyone knows it. I, I think I, that was played instantly because I knew that was my only other option. And so once I'd played a4, it didn't take me any time at all to play bishop d3 because I was tossing up between playing well, you need to toss bishop faster. d3 and a4 you need, anyway. You need to toss faster. <clears throat> Because it's not yeah. worth it. And you should know it's not worth it either because you know that you are better, but you also know that you are not winning. Mm. And so it's no point wasting time here because it's not going to get you significantly closer to a desired win. Okay, this is two and a half. Like, again, very simple dilemma. We have a bishop that needs to move. This is out. This is considerable but really not preferred looks good looks good looks good this one comes with a tempo okay sold that's it i'd much rather you get you get this wrong than spend two and a half minutes on it especially because the chances of you getting this wrong is about 0 0.1 percent like what <laughs> could be wrong about this developing with a tempo See, and that was fast. <laughs> How ironic is that? Okay, rookie won two and a half. What? I think I think the 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 issue here was that I I knew I was quite a bit better, and I was spending all this time trying to figure out if I could actually just break through and win like ah, like what i don't know but that's what i spent all my time trying to calculate and sacking no, 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 no. you are getting very vague here so what did you calculate tell me oh you know like bishop takes g6 or you know stuff like that but dude that's one second i take they take back it's crap done you are better lucas but this is not the time to look for kill you're not that better it's a very sturdy setup that you have to still completely take apart bit by bit. Which is why you need time. Put yeah. this here, put this here. It's not ready to kill yet. Okay, so 94 was slightly inaccurate. But once again, like now this is where you would need to have 12 minutes and you have got 50 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you're still playing pretty decent chess for the record. Credit to you. Yeah, that just... I blooded my bishop there. Yeah. yeah, but also, how awkward is that that we are spending the power of a queen to defend a pawn when we can do this? <laughs> yeah. And that actually defends both, so now mm. your rook is free. Instead, you're tying down your queen to a defense of a pawn. Yeah. Yeah, look, I had like six seconds there. <laughs> Just very bad. And then he's not taking a free piece. Like, what am I watching? Nope. 
like I'm I'm just playing on the increment now, so it's it's just silly. Mm. Like you could have traded queens here and enter an endgame that I don't think you would have lost. Yeah, I, I I would have been fine there, but it was yeah. Actually, why don't we go in? Maybe F4. Is it, but I don't know if we go here. It's, it's unclear because now if the queen goes here, I may be coming back here with a check. Mm. Okay, this got ugly, man. But th this is this is the old you, mate. Like you can't afford playing an opening where you are this much better with like two minutes per move. That's just nonsense. Like you are digging yourself into such a deep hole. That it doesn't matter that you are outclassing this guy by about 300 rating points. Because you don't have time to actually prove it. Yeah. Like what really breaks my heart, Lucas, is that you are a good enough player to get into this position with two, sec two minutes used on the clock. That's it, two yeah. minutes. Yeah. Instead, we did 10. And by the way, you broke our agreement here too. Because I told you that you can't go oh, below gosh. 10. Well, I didn't even, yeah. Oh. Bit, that was, that was not deliberate. I wasn't even looking. Yeah. Yeah, that was not good. Hang on. Is this... Oh, okay. I'll speed up so that I get to the 40s. I, we have had a look at this, haven't we? Um, yeah, it's possibly, yes. I'm not sure. Yeah, because I have given oh, you an yes, insane yes, amount have. of grief yeah. for not homing yeah. in on this uh, backward pawn. Yeah, back pawn, yeah. That's it. All right, so let's... Where Where is the the butcher of Chachak again? From Chachak Rada. Um, sorry, I always try to paint you as a uh, war criminal. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that night off, and then a bit down is the other game. Oh, that... That one. And that. Uh, so what? Oh. Oh, this is against another student of mine who, by the way, I was meant to have a lesson with very soon. Okay, so. Um, I'm black here. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why you played the poison pawn, but that's a different time, different conversation. Uh, yeah, I. I yeah, yeah, actually, hang on. We did go through this one too. No. Yep. Yep, we did because here I gave you a lot of grief for playing King D8 when you could have played Rook B8. Oh, yes, yes, we did, we so did. we did. What we didn't do is we didn't go through this. This one, yeah. Which I need to be very careful about because, A, I have already exposed myself to a lot of internet hate and uh, I also made a few comments about this game on Twitter because uh, the person you played against is my follower except I didn't realize that this uh, opening that he was playing was based on a course by a very established content creator and I suggested to your opponent quote myself that I wholeheartedly recommend that you drop this line altogether <laughs> yes and then said content creator hit me up for a why are you saying that and uh, it got into a very awkward and unpleasant conversation, which I didn't really want to expose myself or the content creator either. But it's just not principled. And I would like to stick with that, but I will take back the give it up, buddy statement. It's up to them if they are fine with this. But this is what we prepped, and it turned out pretty fine, and I'm happy with that. Although, from memory, we didn't prepare bishop e7. I th thought we did. Really? I'm pretty sure. Let me just. I think you are actually correct. But what was what were we looking at after Bishop uh, G5? Hang on. I'll tell you now. Are you gonna now embarrass me in front of uh, the world <laughs> of the internet? And uh, let's just have a look. So. <clears throat> And you say, yeah, uh, I am. I, I like that. Thank you. So G3, yeah, C5. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, no, we actually looked at bishop e6, I reckon, Lucas. Hang on. What is this? Move 7? You're struggling, dude. 
Yeah, well, because I'm trying to figure there are there are so many different variations on uh, on move seven. Hang on. Yeah, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll have a look at it later. Um, I yeah, bishop b seven after knight b three, bishop b seven. Okay. Yep. All right, fine. So c four d four. And here, I think, d3 is the computer's recommendation. It's a very ballsy yeah. move. Yeah. Very ballsy move. I like it for black. Um, okay, so I quite like this. Because we lost the pawn, but um, this endgame is not easy at all. Like, here, queen d8 is actually a bad move. Yeah. Like, not good enough is a better way to put it. Okay, so... Bishop f4, bishop f5, queen there, bishop back. Yeah, that was bad. I, I should have just gone bishop e6 Oops. initially. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I like this. So now this opens up bishop f6 and then the knight can jump back to e5. That was very cool. Queen b6. Hmm. For the record, I thought I was completely lost here. <laughs> In usual style. True to so, your real self, yeah. the idea of having white squared compensation didn't even enter the realm of possibilities in your head. No. No, because that would make sense, right? Like, it's totally okay for white to have this gap there. And that, <laughs> and that, and that, and that. And you having a white squared bishop and them not. Okay, good chess. By the way, it's insane to see the level of your chess going up by about 5 million rating points as soon as you have got 40 minutes to burn. Yeah. I thought bishop b4 was nice. Yeah, it was splendid. I mean, knight d4 was walking into the slaughter, yeah. to be honest. Like, that was really, really bad in an otherwise very promising situation. He could have just played c5 and chucked something on d6 in your face. Well, I... Yeah, that's what I thought he was going to play c5. Now, having said that, I have a reason why he didn't do that, and that is because it gives up d square a lot. Like, now uh -huh, that yeah. bishop on d5 is a real nasty character. T total monster, yeah. That being said, it's not good enough. But that could be a positional consideration for white to actually want to hunt the bishop down. Yeah. Except it's a tragic tactical blunder. And even here, he had knight g5. Did you see that? I did not see knight g5, no. And no. Uh, with some potential of stirring the pot. Although now upon... I mean, isn't there... I just, I'm looking at, like, how is this even working? Because here there isn't much, is there? And according to the engine, a3 is hurting here. So what happens if I drop back? I'm a bit lost Beef. here in... Oh, this check. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, but the knight can drop back, right? I think there will be some... Oh! At... Oh, boy. B4? Yeah. That's Whoa. what I thought. What B4 and on then... It, man? Just... Like, I, I don't get this. Oh, okay. So it's just a trap bishop. Yeah. That's what I thought after A3. B4. I thought you were going to tell me that. Oh, that's what I calculated after knight g5, that in oh. the end my bishop gets trapped. Didn't you oh, see no, 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 no. I didn't see... No, loser? sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm saying just now, because <laughs> I didn't see in the game knight g5, but just now after a3, I thought the idea would be b4. I'm sorry, but yeah. Lucas, but I, I'm a little bit slower on the uptake, so it took me a while to recognize that after knight g5, in the end of that line, this bishop gets trapped. <laughs> Humble apologies. Pay payment redirected. Yes. <laughs> so how does it work though after knight f6? Let me get my head around this for a sec. Yeah, it doesn't. It just doesn't. It's just nonsense. Okay. Like, uh, after takes, takes, the best they have is to try to get the, the rook back. But that just ain't gonna cut it. You just drop back and you're winning. Yeah. Okay, so here already he was doomed. And then that that was beauty, man. Like, queen c5, 96, queen h5. I was so happy. I was so yeah, very I was, happy when you I sent was, it to me. I was over the moon, man. Like, as black in 22 moves, you pretty much destroy the 2200 as an 1800 player. That doesn't happen every day in a 40 40 league. 
Yeah, um, I was pretty. I was pretty chuffed with uh, with uh, with Queen H5. And uh, <laughs> also, our opening at least the prep worked out for a while. Not fully, but you know. Yeah, C4. I I we I don't think we considered C4. Baby steps. No, I think we put most of our efforts into Knight C3. Yeah. Yeah, C4 <laughs> was not on. Which is uh, actually was a mistake of mine because it's a very logical move to throw in. But that being said, I still insist that uh, this is yeah D three. <laughs> yeah. This is juicy. This is juicy. I mean, I'm plus three point three. Who cares? All right. Uh, great job there. Great job. Let's see how we went against Razor Boy. Oh, so we went into a Tarash. Yeah, like I had no idea what I was doing here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll talk about this, uh, the opening aspects of this later. Actually, I haven't got no problems with you entering the Tarish for the record. What I had problems with, Lucas, here is that why are we not taking this? Yeah, taking the pawn. Yeah, that was just dumb. But what was the calculation behind it? Oh, I could not tell you. Okay, I've, 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 I've got 10. Take, 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 knight d5, I suck. Uh, that was probably it. And if you just had added queen takes b2, they suck. That would have been pretty neat. Yeah. Like, you can't not take back a pawn like this. Yeah. It's just silly. And here we played A6. Holy kaduli. Do tell. Like, why don't we play something like this? And again, knight d5. I know, but then you pick off this. There is a pin here. It gets messy. Yeah. Messy is good. I just don't get this. What was this designed to? Oh, it was to stop knight b5. I mean, that, that's you know. I, I, okay, so I, I play was... here. Yeah, you would label this as utterly stupid. Correct. Sure. So now knight b5 because that's the move you are stopping. So I purposely fell for it. I don't get it. Uh knight d6. This is hanging, mate. Okay, uh, rook b1, I moved the bishop, and now knight d6. Actually, can't go there to my greatest dismay. Okay, come back, knight d6, I go here, go on. It doesn't exactly look like I'm... Yeah. <clears throat> ...pooing my pens in fear that I'm going to be destroyed, right? Mm. Like, in this position, Lucas, especially having just given up the dark squared bishops, this can't be a serious threat, mate. Like, that square is yours to cover. No worries. Yeah. And as soon as it lands there, you just go like, ha, oh, gotcha, baby. And it happens at the cost of a pawn. Not only is it not a threat, you can't wait for them to do this. Like, this prevents a blunder, as far <laughs> as I am concerned. Yeah. But Queen A5... Yeah, it was a misunderstanding on my part. Like, I thought about it in the wrong way. Yeah. Well, yeah. usual bad, or neg pessimistic, negative way. <laughs> <clears throat> yes. Um, and, yeah, also Queen A5. Knight takes, Bishop takes. Not even sure where the Rook would go. And not even sure if I would play here Rook D8 or pull the Bishop back, perhaps. This is hanging. This is coming. I don't even know who is better here, man. Like, this is just fully playable as far as I'm concerned. Let's just chuck on the engine to embarrass me. Oh, white has a substantial edge here, according to the engine. Knight d2, I walked into this. Mm. Is it though? Take, take, knight b4. They walked into this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's messy. Maybe let's go back a little bit further back. Ah, yeah, so I, I, it looks like pawn. I pulled the bishop back the wrong way. I shouldn't have pulled it back at all. 
<laughs> and they can't retake because of knight b4. And if they take here, then I don't know, either rook d8 or queen c5. It looks very close to an equal, man. And you are already burying yourself here like, oh, I'm dead. No, you're not. Yeah. Okay, now that is next level. Yeah, that was dumb. Like, it, what? You just played a6 to prevent knight c3 and then you take this next move? Yeah, look. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> How is that a train of thoughts from an extremely intelligent man like you? After t 11 minutes, let's give up the best piece we have on the board. That must have been some desperation of the highest order. So why don't you develop that? Just What's wrong with just putting a piece on a semi-decent square? Yeah. Like, I, I don't even know what I want to do. I'm just ticking boxes now, right? Like you should. Yeah. Like, yeah. Is my army developed? No. Oh, okay. Well, let's get them in. Yeah, someday I will move the knight. I guess you were scared of knight d4. So what? Big deal. I can put a knight in the center too. Now this is hanging. I can jump in there on a rainy day. And I warmly welcome this because now I have got a supporter of the d5 pawn. Mm. We also have opposite colored bishops. So despite of the fact that you are a pawn down, we have got hopes. Yeah. That that just killed Lucas your own chances of counterplay, about 80% of them. Mm. Um, you are not defending this, are you? Uh, you are, well, yes. I thought Bishop C8 was the only way to defend both. <clears throat> okay, well, it, now we need to establish something. Which one is hurting you more if they drop? Um, the A pawn. So if it was white to move, they would take this, not this, is what you're saying? Yes. Well, you're very wrong, and I have no idea why you're saying that. Well, because if he takes A6, then he's got... <clears throat> um, then he's got... Um, he's got what? Well, he's got those two pawns down. I mean, he marches them down. That's, and if I take here, then I don't. Like, dude, you are a legend at maths. I suck at it, but after this, I've got 75 million moves to get a queen. After taking this, it's three. This is the absolute cornerstone of your central formation. Once I take this, this is dying too. Once I take this, nothing is dying. This is what holds your structure in one piece. Matter of fact, if I had to label the most important pawn in this structure for black, I would easily vote for this. If right. someone told me you now must nominate a pawn that has to come off the board, this would be the last one I would vote for. I would much rather lose this. Yeah. I would have hopes if this was gone. If this is gone, I've nothing. I've got absolutely nothing. Capital N. But mm -hmm. now I'm getting to my point, Lucas. This is not hanging, mate, because ta da. Yeah, I didn't see that. Napool. Like, <laughs> that's nonsense, mate. Yeah. It's not that you didn't see that. You don't, let, you disallow yourself to see it because you're still completely disabling yourself from calling this a complete garbage. In your head, this is like, oh my god, my opponent, who should be a world champion candidate, is attacking this pawn. I have two options, resign right now, resign right now or defend it. Like, you're absolutely disabling yourself from saying, hang on a second. This one is a threat. This one is total garbage. As long as you are not willing, Lucas, to call a garbage garbage, you are always going to respond to these moves incorrectly. Because in your head, they are a creation of God. As opposed to an idea coming from a mere mortal like yourself. Full of self-doubts, mistakes, erroneous calculations. And I'm not saying this is a bad move, don't get me wrong. Your reaction to it is bad. 
Yeah. It's a good move. It threatens, it develops, it cre brings the big queen to d4. It's fabulous. There is mm. nothing wrong with queen a4. As long as you realize that it's actually not threatening that. It's threatening this and it wants to play queen d4. Now you can help c6 by playing bishop f5. You can't help queen d4. It just sucks. Yeah. And you are dead. <laughs> That's totally okay to be aware of that. But in the realm of being dead, there are still a lot of garbage moves available that you can jump on. And for the record, even here you are dead, but now you have counterplay. Yeah. It's very important. And I think uh, we got gutted here rather quick, right? Yeah, it was, it was like, yeah. It was all over. Look, you, uh, of course, 50 seconds. Like I was about to tell you some plans and strategies. <laughs> yeah. So... Again, I feel like it's uh, wasting here my not my but your time really by telling you here clever tricks you could play for because in fifty seconds you are in panic mode, which is somewhat unwarranted by the way because of the forty seconds increment. But if I was black here, I would be thinking like this: Rook e4 would be a cool move, because if Bishop takes pawn takes, I've got a ton of weak white squares and I can set up mate threats. Mm. I can't do that because after takes takes this hangs. Yeah. So I would play here rook d7. I assume that they do something like this. And I go in. Yeah. It's total garbage, mate. <laughs> but these are the types of moves that will allow you to turn a game around. Because now I'm posing problems. I'm asking questions. Do you take me? Am I bluffing? Or is it real? And probably yeah. it's actually bluff. Like, you know, queen moves, whatever. Bishop in, this may be checked down, but maybe you have rook d5. I don't think I need to tell you this. There is, the ball is in play. You have this, then this, then this. All of a sudden, he has got stuff to worry about. Mm. Right now, his only worry is how long it will take to convert because he can have his coffee. <laughs> you yeah. need to ask difficult questions. The best to your ability at first i wanted to do this and even that is more annoying than nothing but i quite like this idea i really do it attacks that pawn they go back now i have d4 all right take 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 and all of a sudden this rook is really misplaced and i'm threatening to win the game yeah you heard that right win the mm. game they play a free fine queen c2 i think i just won the game maybe not but even that looks now extremely shaky for white. Yeah. And it's quadruply, triply, millionly applying when you're down in time. Because now we are dead lost on the board. We are dead lost on the clock. Both tendencies are shocking. You can't change the tendency of the clock. So you need to change the tendency on the board. And that's a really awesome way to wreck havoc the maximum amount from this position and again i'm a hundred percent certain that it's total bollocks and loses by force but that's beside the point yeah yeah hmm that queen is unguarded isn't it yeah but we can't really utilize that no <clears throat> pity I still wouldn't have removed that queen from there unless I had to. Maybe something like this, although this is incoming. Okay. Wow, that's ballsy. Hmm. So close yet so far. Yeah, your opponent converted in the end nicely. Oh, dude, that was a bit yeah, of a heartbreaker. Played, uh, yeah, he played very well as well, I think. He did. Yeah. <clears throat> he did. Now, I've got a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, remember how last, not last, yesterday I was playing a fair bit of Blitz and you were observing me whilst I was playing? Yes. And um, It was very nice. <laughs> it, you really do enjoy watching those games. I do. <laughs> so, here is my question for you. When you watch that, that's exactly the type of chess 
that I would like you to play. You know that I know that, yeah? That's what we're working yep. towards. Yep. How do you see yourself compared to that? Like, what do you <laughs> think? No, no, it's a serious question. I'm not asking it to blow my own trumpet. When uh, you look at it, what is the component of the game where you go like, there's no bloody way I could do it like that? Um, <clears throat> I think it's probably two things. I think the first is um, that you're a lot faster. Like, you make strong moves a lot faster. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel as though if I had, you know, 15 minutes or something, I I would be able to <clears throat> come up with that move and be confident about it. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, sometimes I do. Like, sometimes I do manage to predict your moves. Um because I like I type it into Skype and then and then you and then before I press enter you've played the move you know hmm. so sometimes I do get it um, <clears throat> but yeah certainly the like the combination of speed and strong move uh, and probably the other one is is your and I, I imagine this is related but that you you your calculation is just far more accurate like you um okay yeah so again, um, again if i had a lot more time i would be able to you know plonk my way through and get there but you like you're lightning fast right like it's huh. as, if. as if but you know it, it, so you can play a, you can play a 5-0 blitz game and you can play you know a whole heap of very very strong moves that you've calculated very accurately mm -hmm. and i would still be on like move seven right right now, I need to respond to this because obviously there was a reason why I did this provocation. Sure. I totally agree with the first part. And in fact, I'm going to model this to you through your game. To for, for me to have this position, I would likely be on increment in this time control. Sure. So if I had played this as white, I'm likely, I would be very likely to have here about 15 minutes still. Mm. So I would have basically earned back what I used. You yep. are on two minutes. That doesn't make me a better player than you are by a single inch. It's your demons that you are fighting for 13 solid minutes before you come to these exact conclusions I come to. Mm. It's very little to do with chess. Very, very little. Like the 13 minutes wasted here, about 11 and a half, is self-doubt. In a lot of positions where, you know, like these, that need no justification whatsoever. Like, until now, you made one inaccurate move. Two. Mm. Versus, you know, and that was good enough so that according to the engine, we are almost two pawns up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I would much rather you... Blitzing this out, and when I say blitzing, I mean at a reasonable pace and occasionally miss a few more accurate moves so that your inaccuracy count will be higher at the expense of still having a very sensible, very coherent position with time available. Mm. So that when it does count... Um, then you do have the time and unfortunately one aspect that you are not highlighting which is very little about me but a lot about you mm. is that your ability to overstate the importance of your opponent's plans is absolutely yet yeah, next level like yeah. your respect for your opponent's plans and their potential is just insane with other words you are way too nice <laughs> which outwardly you should be but inwardly the good old concept comes back again and biting us in the back if you don't call your opponent's moves garbage when they are garbage you are not going to look for the matching response yeah and in this game your opponent has played already a fair number of rubbish moves but not bad enough to destroy them mm. but bad enough so that let's put our stuff in the center is going to kill them pretty soon. Now, um, let's do a few puzzles on Leeches, which is the deadliest thing ever. 
On my account. Why not coconut? Your turn, you're black. I have no idea what the solution is, because these puzzles are weird. Yeah, they are. Okay, I think I have a good idea about what this is doing. What? Do I? I thought I did. Is it C5? That's what I thought, but then DC, knight C6, knight takes C6 is check. But then again, after BC, rook D8, rook D8 that mate on B2 is really hurting. But I don't know if that's uh, good enough. Is that your call? Yeah, I can't see anything better than C5. Did you look at rook E8? Yeah, but like, what is it? He just moves the queen away. Okay. That's not a move. Where? Top, top. Where does the queen move? Not like I have an endless. Yeah, time. C C two. Yep, that's what I would do too, and I didn't see a good move to that, so we settle for C five, are we? Yeah. Okay, well done. What do we do now? We take the free piece. Okay. I'm curious to see how this would have gone down. Takes nine takes. Yeah. So the idea was nine takes 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 queen C two. And here we had queen d4 with irresistible threats. Rather junky for a puzzle, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> but we both got it right, so that's cool. All right, next. Uh, f3. Go on. And if bishop f3, then... Oh, rook g7. No, but, uh... Yeah, rook g7. Go on. And if the king takes this queen g6, mate. You mean king h8? Um, <clears throat> yeah, okay. Uh, after after Queen G six King H eight Bishop G8 there. Um, I would really like you to find the answer to that, but I want to save some time, so I will just tell you that Queen H5 poops the party then. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. All right. So maybe F3 is not good. Mm -hmm. What else? Is uh, uh, what about <laughs> Queenside Castling? I don't know. Um. I wouldn't mind that move, actually. Um, okay, I mean, so surely we've got to look at rook g2, right? Yeah, we do, but it's... after queen g2, we quickly stop looking, so let's move on. Yeah. Is there a better... I think, Lucas, this is a typical case when we can't see the forest because of the trees. Yeah. Ah, what about just C4? Yeah, go on. Yeah. <clears throat> so C4. Uh, queen. Uh, what are we? Queen C6. I mean, come on, dudes. Queen C6, really? When I have got queen takes D4, queen F3. Or queen takes D4, loses a bishop. Which bishop? 
the bishop on g2. Because your a1 rook is not hanging with check? I take your silence as a whoopsie daisy. No, hang on a minute. If c4, queen d4, rook g2. Queen takes a1 check. Yeah, okay. Now after queen d4, you do have rook d1. When I don't have a good queen move to defend my bishop, but the fact that this went completely under the radar is not good. Yeah, because I'm still looking at the board with the <laughs> pawns there. Um... But that's a very strange comment to make because if in your head the pawn is on c3, then how could I take on d4? Yeah, I'm not saying it's logical. <laughs> Just Yeah, but uh, this is why I'm insisting, Luke, is that if you actually call the moves out in your head, then in your head the language is going to cause a clash in that, like, hang on a second. He just said queen takes d4. How could that be when there is a pawn on c3? This is why I uh, really well, believe the in the power of calling out moves in your head when you calculate. Well, the rook d1 move is good. It is good, but I don't see what you do after c4, queen f3. Did you even look at this? Yeah, but like, what does it do? It attacks this bishop and creates a mate threat. I don't know the solution, to be perfectly honest with you, but I didn't see a response to this. And if you do, tell me, man. It's a bit clumsy because it blocks in the bishop, so I'm a bit reluctant. But the fact that rook g2 is unstoppable is making it a move. And queen, a, queen a5 isn't a move? Queen g6, queen a5 are taking d2, or even rook c1. Yeah. I'm thinking it's queen g6, but maybe I'm embarrassing myself. No. Queen of three, okay. Yeah, that's a good move though, because now if you take, they take here. I missed that. But I think rook c1 is winning here. No, no. Mm. Shivers. Hang on, can't you just... Uh, so maybe take, take, you take. queen up, yeah, queen whatever. check, and then king f3 just wins. Yeah. But then no, because queen c3 check. Oh, but then I can come back. But then they take. I'm confused, man. Okay, I don't get this. What's going on here? So king f3, key queen check. King e... What? What? Oh, I'll just king, keep going. King yeah. g4. Yeah. And f5, move the king away, and there are no more checks. Yeah, but then I can't take this. So it, it was actually quite deep. Because now I well, can take... You can just no, because... Here. Yeah. And even then there are dirty checks like this. This was actually a lot deeper than I thought. Yeah. Alright, last one. Okay. What the heck is that? Oh. oh my god, I don't even know what's going on here. Like, it doesn't look like a chess position. Isn't just queen g6 winning because rook and queen h6 is on? Rook where, sorry? Like, this is just game over. Like, th th this is mate and rook hangs. Like, how is, I don't understand how this is a puzzle. <laughs> well, careful, because sometimes it's not... Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I don't get... Oh, bishop e8 in the end there. Yeah. So I do need to use some brains. So oh, I just go here, right? Then bishop e7, wow. Thank you for telling me to be careful. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out it was a timely warning. Okay, so what I could do 
is to pull back bishop e8, take the bishop, queen takes, and then take the knight, and he can't take because of the pin. And I'm a lot of material ahead there. Yeah, that was it. So bishop e8, takes, takes, takes. I wish I had let you calculate this, Lucas. I'm sorry, <laughs> I ruined the party there, but I don't know. <laughs> That's this right. over. All right, this looks a little bit more sensible. Hmm. Well, I mean, Rook C1. Yeah, go on. Yeah, Rook C1, King A2. Really, dude, like. Oh, no, then that's mate. So the Queen has to take it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, what's so. Wrong? What's, what, what's wrong with that? Ah, uh, oh, hang on. Uh, so yeah, so rook c1, queen c1, rook c1, king c1, queen c5. Mm -hmm. uh, king, okay, king d1. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not convinced, man. Yeah. I'm not convinced. Yeah, I'm not sure about this. The longer I look at it, the less sure I become too. I mean, maybe the point is just to give two rooks for the queen. I, my number one idea was queen c5 with mate. And after knight f6, king f8, there is no more checks from what I can tell. King d8, sorry. He, he, king d8. But. After rook e5, I couldn't find a straightforward win. Because after queen e5, queen f8 check, king c7. Knight d5 check, king drop. Oh, that should win, actually. So just queen c5 now. Well, that's, I was looking at queen c5, knight check, king d8. That was my main line. But it's shaky. I'm not proud of it. No. So I looked at this take too, but I couldn't make it work. What about bishop takes? I didn't fancy sacrificing the queen that soon. Yeah. I missed something here. I did look at this, but I saw the checks. And so it got. Well, you. Uh... Oh my god, I just take this. Yeah. And if the queen takes, then I can go in. Yeah. But then again, so the rook that's, that's not winning yet. But the rook will take, not the queen. Then I can go in here. Actually, takes queen takes is the only challenge. And then check. And then you go in. in here, and now I don't see what we do because if I go in again, rook takes queen takes king back. Queen takes. That's far from being persuasive. Yeah, because doesn't he have queen b two? Or a check or something now? Not if I take one here because the queen is guarding that. But uh, um, yeah, but he would have queen d4 check, wouldn't he? Yes, he would. But that doesn't really phase me. I can hopefully dodge those checks. But I don't like that line. I think we are missing something um, far more obvious. Oh my god, oh, what about I will retire from coaching. Holy cow, Queens. this is made, dude. Get out of here. Like, how embarrassing is this? I missed this check and then mate. Oh, oh boy, that was lame. <laughs> okay, we need to smash this, Lucas. One more. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, this is easy. What's your first candidate move? Uh, D3. Okay, what's wrong with it? <clears throat> uh, nothing much that I can see. So why didn't you call it? Uh, well, because typically these puzzles involve lines. They do, but I was hoping you calculated at least one. <laughs> uh, well, D3. Let's go with takes. Yeah. Then there's uh, Rook F2, right? I don't know. I, I'm asking. You're answering. Uh, man. Rook F2, Bishop. Mm. Let's go Bishop uh, C7. Bishop, oh, Bishop C7. Oh, okay. Uh, then uh, rook c2. That's right. So now we have established that after rook f2, this is hanging, as yeah. well as all kinds of discovered checks are killing, which is why I played bishop c7 to intimidate you by attacking the piece that gives the check. Yeah. But it doesn't matter because you take that and then you even take this. Mm. Okay, your turn. I missed this actually. That's a clever defense. I really do like that. Well, I mean, it's still... Ah! Yeah! It ain't over till it's over, sir. Yeah, that is pretty clever, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Bloody it's machine. It's actually quite messing with my head now, because I think we have got two different winning moves, and these puzzles disallow that. Yeah, I was looking at rook c2, but the, the, the like, bishop c5 is... Well, why don't we, why don't we disallow that by going, like, bishop d4 or something? And if then bishop c5? Uh, then rook c2. King f1? You should be calling this, Lucas, not me, like... King, king f1, and you take the rook. What rook? This is why oh, you sorry, should be sorry, calling the sorry. lines, not me. Sorry. Yeah, I get you. Sorry. So after bishop bishop d4, <clears throat> bishop c5. Okay, I understand now the difference. This is a very clever puzzle. Because I thought that in this position, both this and these were winning, but only one of them are. <sighs> okay. And it's really deep. So bishop d4, bishop c5, rook check, king key. That's the position when you need to... Well, that's the position when you need to come up with a, a clever move that you need to see here. <sighs> Try to visualize where the pieces are so that you can see the motives clearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I've, I think I've got them. Uh, so bishop d4, bishop c5, check, king f1. Yeah. Now, if... If I go back to f2 with check and he goes king e1. That's not really anything, is it? No. So. You're not picturing Luke as well enough where the pieces are because if you did, you would notice a motive here.
what would white do lucas after bishop d4 bishop c5 check king kid if it was their turn take the bishop i knew you would say that <laughs> which is exactly why i asked the question to which my response will be really yeah no he's not going to take the bishop why not <laughs> Because he's rook saying. So what do we call this phenomenon in chess? A pin. Funny that. Ah, oh, so b6. Right. Now, why but are how... we preferring to put the bishop here and not here? Ah, because when it's on d4, the bishop doesn't have that d4 square to move to. The bishop doesn't have that square to move to anyway because the rook is hanging. So I have no idea what that was even meant to mean. Ah, uh, uh, the difference is... It's deep, Lucas. Like, this is hard. So instead yeah, yeah, of yeah. picking uh, yourself, uh, just try to figure out what's going on. The difference is... Well, what's the difference when the bishop's on d4? I don't know. It's blocking the d3 pawn. That's one difference. No. The idea, Lucas, is, is that in this position after king f1... Yeah. When we play b6, they have rook d8. Attacking the bishop whilst removing the rook from the pin. Oh. But then we have bishop f6 hitting the rook and the bishop is still on. Now, if we had done this with bishop e3, then after the whole same shebang goes down, when you play b6, they have rook e8 attacking the bishop. But moving on to a square where the bishop square. can't attack back. Wow. Okay, yeah. That was pretty neat. I didn't see any of that when I called out d3 here. So it was a bit of an accident on my end. But it's a beautiful move that this wins, this doesn't. I mean, wow. probably that does win too. But far less convincingly than the other one. Yeah. Yeah, so these are the things where you need to improve, man, that when these things pop up like this, you need to spot that that's a pin. And so taking is just, yeah, yeah thank you, F freebie. Mm. Which I even had to prompt you to, what would I do? You instantly grab the bishop, not seeing that. Which, as much as I hate to rub it in, is very typical of you, that you are aware of your opponent's threats, but unaware of the real dirties, you can deliver to them yeah yeah all righty dudeski wow. i need Thank to go you. that's great uh i'm glad that we got so oof okay that was a bit uh, over the top but that's all right um <laughs> yeah uh keep at it mate try to play 15 tens the best you can because clearly time is of the essence yeah. still and yeah we need to trust lucas our chess instinct and our chess sense so that we don't end up spending 13 minutes on developing our army. I'd much rather you play faster and make inaccuracies than have that two minutes drama day when we can't convert against someone clearly inferior to you just because you don't have time. Yeah, yeah. Alrighty, mate. Take care. I gotta go now. Um, talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Cheers. Bye. Alrighty. Bye bye.